Welcome everyone, this is a video we're doing on the clutch master cylinder replacement on a Lotus Evora uh, 2015. So it's the one with the plastic master, cyl uh, master cylinder there, did not drop it. Um, it's very much a home handyman, sort of home mechanic job. Um, I'm reasonably competent with, with it, but it's not super difficult. Anyone with a, a degree of mechanical skill should be able to do this. I wouldn't be too scared about doing it. Um, the history behind this is I bought this car about three or four weeks ago. Um, and I've always wanted a Lotus ever since Bond. Um, I'm very much a car person. We'll, we'll show you around the garage a little bit. I've sort of got... Um, one, two, three, four, five cars myself. Um, but this is just another toy that I'm blessed to sort of be with. The Evora is really quite a, a, a stunning car. Um, I, I love it for the limited driving I've had for it or had at the moment. But anyway, let's let's get on. So the reason we're doing the master cylinder uh, or the clutch master cylinder is basically uh, we had the issue and the well-documented issue of the pedal going to the floor. Um, I initially started um, looking at the slave cylinder uh, and I've done some modifications on the slave cylinder just to make it easier to bleed because it's right up between the back of the engine and the firewall and it's incredibly difficult to get your hand up there. So I'll show you a photo um, of basically the way I've modified it. It just allows you to believe the system a hell of a lot easier uh, and from from the reading I've done you need to believe the systems just to get rid of the um, heat uh, the heat affected fluid. I've replaced the fluid with a dot 5.1 which is more tolerant to the high temperatures that they experience in the back. Um, from what I understand it's just that the, uh, the fluid lines go very close to the exhaust system and the catalytic converter in the back there and they just get the heat soaked. Predominantly mine happened when it was actually sitting. So you'd leave the car sitting, um, come back the next morning and the clutch would go straight to the floor. If you pulled the clutch back, it would pump up. After a while or after a couple of days of doing that, it just packed the sand and just wouldn't wouldn't come back up. So what I've done at the moment is that I've actually uh, removed the front clamp, got all the bits in, and I'll just show you around effectively the, the process of putting it back together. Um, from my perspective, um, I'll, I'll, I'll start basically on the inside. Um, one recommendation I've had is take the driver's seat out. Um, it's really easy to take the driver's seat out. The pin to get the master cylinder out or the clutch master cylinder out is quite difficult. I'm a little bit, uh, well, I'm certainly as flexible as a lump of concrete and hence I really struggle. I'm blessed to have a son which can get in there and do some of the work for me because he's pretty flexible and he's competent enough where he can actually go in there and push stuff through and undo stuff, which is great. But anything I struggle with, I go, son, you can come and do that. He's behind the camera at the moment. Um, so getting the seat out is pretty simple. I mean, oh, I don't have to go over about getting the seat out, but it's got, uh, my car's got uh, seat warmers in it. Um, and I think it's got another plug for a seatbelt warning light. That's about the only tricky thing, you know, un undo the plug. So we'll pull the seat out um, and then we'll lay in there and we'll put that clever spin back in. Um, I found that um, I needed to take the, there's a switch that is for the cruise control and it's basically a clutch positioning sensor. Um, I think it cuts off the fuel as well when you're um, trying to do, um, when, when you're changing gear or something. So we'll get into that and show you what we're doing there. Yep, come around this side. So we've put the clever spin back in. Um, I've got actually the seat out of the car because I struggle from a 
um, excess hair spec and a little bit big and uh, I was sort of not the most flexible so I actually got my son in um, he's 10 and he managed to get his head and arms and everything up there a hell of a lot easier than I can um, so if you've got kids that can do that sort of thing for you go for it because I um, I found it really made the job so much easier for me while the seats out obviously just give it a bit of a clean and everything like that so throw the seat back in um, can't quite see it here but basically we've got three plugs here one for the seat belt warning light um, and the heat setter so I'll go grab the seat and I'll throw it in so here we go so Nathan you come over here and hold the door okay. um, this is my helper just hold the door so it doesn't smack okay. against the edge there not a big gap in here so bolts oh, bolts are out <clears throat> Hopefully this comes out elegantly. It didn't last time. Try not to scrape too much up. There we go. So it's all set right forward. So this is the Evora um, size, no, master cylinder. Um, the plastic one which they superseded the steel one this was the one that was obviously fitted to my car it is actually a sealed unit I actually hacked off the end of it just so I could have a look on the inside I'm not sure if you'll be able to see close up or anything but looking at the seals and everything it actually looks okay I'm not 100% sure why uh, it wasn't working um, but look, Bruce in the pudding, you've replaced it and it starts working. So if you come over here, we can actually see where it normally goes. This in here is the Wilwood replacement one. Uh, so the Wilwood replacement one is actually a direct fit. It goes in there. The kit that I got compromised basically the Wilwood master cylinder a line, everything you needed. The downside to that system is that uh, for my car, it appeared as though it was designed for a left-hand drive car, the kit, rather than a right-hand. So coming right down here, this here is where the master cylinder is, at the end of my finger there. This is the line through there, uh, all the way down there, and connects into there. Um, the orientation is that way so it's this whoop this bit uh, there that's it now the left hand drive one that pipe is about that much too short to go all the way there um, it was designed for a left hand drive car so what I've actually had to do bring the camera around here you just see here, I've had to put this extension onto the pipe. It's a little bit messy, what I've had to do there. But given that we're actually in COVID-19 lockdown, um, I did manage to get this bit made for me when we, uh, we shouldn't be going out and doing anything at all. So not ideal, but look, it, it's, it's fine. And also, um, if I was needing to replace that bit at some stage, I wouldn't have to take the, uh, the um, clamp off. I can actually get to that via the um, wheel arch liner. <coughs> so, you can see here, that's the, that's the master. Quite simple to replace. Nice and easy to replace in there. Um, it would have been a super duper quick job if that pipe had been long enough. I spent quite a bit of time trying to get another bit of pipe sorted out or whatever because it couldn't just pop out to sort it out um you know we're we're in a basically for a four week lockdown here where we can't leave the house anyway on to the um clam shell now um i've got to secure this line down sort of tie it or or cable tie it down properly i'll do that and then we'll start looking at the clam 
Right, so um, in putting the clam back on, we've basically put these ear vents on, or ear shields, I don't really know what you call them, really. Uh, so, they're on. Um, just from a close-up aspect, the clam's actually held on by a bolt in there, or should I say a fastener in there. Zoom out of it, go out of it. Um, two fasteners in here, so this is the, I think they call it the A panel. So two fasteners there. Then if we go to the front bumper, um, we've got one at the trailing edge, um, sort of an intermediate one. There's two there. The headlight normally goes in here, so this is the headlight position. Uh, there's a fastener under there, which is actually underneath the clam, so the clam normally is there. And you sort of have to get that in there. And then there's the well-known one underneath the lotus badge. Uh, so that's the lotus badge one. And back to the other side. So that one's hidden there. So the cam effectively is there. Headlight. One, two, three, four. We're on the left-hand side of the car. Two in the A panel. And two in this um, little... Oh, sorry. I think there's just one in this. I've um, cable tied these on just to hold them in place because I've been walking back and forwards and the last thing I want to do is catch one of these and snap it off. Alright. You take your weight but you outside. front of the car and just tell us where the bolt is for the badge. Um yeah it's it's good. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Um, it's okay. Yep that's that's fine. Yeah. It's fine. That's it. So, as you've just seen, the job is all finished now. It's going perfectly, which is really reassuring. Earlier on in the video, I talked about the clutch going to the, the floor after it was left. Uh, just to explain more on this, it was going to the floor after it was left overnight. So I'd use it, and the next morning it would go to the floor. That was where the um, symptoms showed up. The second thing is I use the Lotus service manual, which is downloadable. That is great. It's very informative, and without that, it would be somewhat harder to do. And the third thing is, this is our first video that we've done, so excuse the ums and the slightly poor editing. We'll see what we can do in the future to improve that. And the last thing, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the notes below. Thank you.